Stratix from Warsaw Hackerspace. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to use JSONnet. JSONnet is a description language like JSON or YAML, but much more powerful. You'll start by installing it on your computer. I use macOS, so I'll use brew install JSONnet. I also recommend a JQ, a JSON command line utility, and the language server protocol extension for whatever code editor you're using. I'm using this one from Grafana for VS Code, but these are not required. Okay, so here's a demo file for JSONnet. And just like in JSON, you can have objects with keys and values. But unlike JSON, you don't have to use quotes everywhere. Of course, you can do comments and multi-line comments, and they will not be evaluated in the output JSON. And by the way, if you want to output to YAML or something else, you can do that too. You have all the classic JSON types. You have objects, arrays with numbers, both integers and floating points, booleans and null. This is straightforward. But you also have expressions. You can concatenate arrays, for example. You can do calculations on numbers and concatenate strings as well. For example, let's say you're writing a configuration file for some service somewhere, uh, and you want a delay parameter of 1.5 hours. So you can express it like so for more readability. But in the end, you just have a regular JSON. You also have string templates. So for example, a connection string would be a common use case. So let's say HTTP and I'll have two strings here and another one here. And then parameters, I'll pass user, uh, password and domain. And as you can see, I do have a formatter uh, configured for JSONnet, just for my convenience. And this template string concatenates properly. So let's make it a bit more sophisticated and let's just define a configuration object up the top. So let's say user John, uh, the password will be 1234 and an example.org domain, or let's just call it FQDN. And now we can, in this connection string, we can refer to other parts of the JSONnet file. So for example, we could do self. Now self is the object that we're in, which in this case is this outermost object, and then CFG that And this still works. Now we define CFG out of convenience, but we don't actually want it in the evaluated or in JSONnet parlance manifested JSON. So we can mark objects or keys in an object as hidden with this double colon syntax. And now you can still refer to it, but it's hidden in the evaluated or manifested file. Let's make things a bit more sophisticated still. We could have some service configuration within this file and I'll just move it here. And now we have a problem because self now refers to this object and not this object. Now, one way we can deal with it is we can define local variables. Now local variables act just like keys, except there you can reference them anywhere deeper within the scope of the current object. 
So I can do local CFG equals self.cfg. And now I can just do CFG pass user at QDN like so. And as you can see, this now still works. You can also refer to the outermost object here using the dollar sign. And that still works. Okay, you can have functions. So let's say we do this a lot for whatever reason. This is just an example. So we can define a local function uh, hours to milliseconds. Within par parentheses, we'll do hours. And after the equal sign, we'll do hours times 60 times 60 times 1000. And now we can do hours to milliseconds. And we no longer need that comment. And this still works. Now you can imagine how templatizing things like this can be useful when you have, for example, large configuration files. Uh, that's part of the reason why JSONet is popular in things like Kubernetes. But you can do it, uh, you can use it for whatever application suits your needs. Okay, so we have functions. Um, now let's talk about object merging. <laughs> so let's say we have another service that's kind of similar to the first one, but has some changes. So we can concatenate uh, this original object and add, let's just say, environment variables. Uh, let's just see if they're both true. And as you might have noticed, when I ran the auto formatter, it deleted the plus because the convenient syntax for object merging in JSONet is just reference to some other object and then within parentheses, whatever object you're merging it with. So you can see we have the same stuff as the original service and then some. Now let's say this also had an environment uh, object. Let's just say it was defined like so. Now, because we redefined environment, we lost this. So when doing object merging, if you want to also continue merging deeper instead of just replacing some keys with new values, you can do plus before the colon. And this will also merge the contents of this value. And this works both on objects and on arrays. Now, let's talk about imports. If this uh, was a real example, you probably wouldn't have a single JSONet file. You'd have many templates reused for different things. And you might notice that by convention, um, JSONet files that are meant to be imported and not evaluated are called .lipsonet, but this is basically just a convention. So let's comment all of this out and I will do local fake service, import fake service lipsonet. Okay. And now I can do service fake service. Uh oh, user is needed. So maybe you spotted this, but within this lipsonet file, I have this CFG object similar to the original example, but the user and password are missing. And instead of the actual value, there's an error value. And if this is reference, it will just show an error. So this is for placeholders that you're meant to fill in when using this object as a template. So know that this is in CFG. So we will just do CFG plus because we're extending it. And then we're, let's just copy this config file. 
and voila. And let's just clean this up and mm, let's get back to some original examples. So we do add the delay milliseconds environment. And again, we are extending the environment object from the imported object. So we'll add a plus and we have this merged. And then the second service, we could also be extending fake service, but since we want to reuse this, we can extend an extended object and it will work. JSON has a ton of more features. Mm, what I've showed you is 99% of what you need, but if you find yourself missing something, there's a standard library of things that might be useful in certain use cases. For example, let's just say that we don't actually want to export that as a JSON object. Maybe we need a JSON string to pass it somewhere else. So I'll just say service to underscore string and we can do standard manifest JSON. And now the service to underscore string, and it's the same stuff it was before, but now it's just a string containing JSON. Mm, or maybe you need a YAML uh, configuration file for something. You can do that too. And you can also export any or uh, Python bars or TOML or XML. And again, that might give you a hint as to why we use JSON at, at Warsaw Hackerspace for Kubernetes, because this is kind of the kind of stuff you would often need where configuring some complex service to run on the cluster. And that's it. That's the tutorial. I hope that was useful. You can find out more about JSONet on jsonet.org. There's a tutorial is pretty good and there's a standard library which is pretty good and you can find out more about Warsaw Hackerspace at hackerspace.pl. Bye!